Deep in the Tidon Basin, in spite of the howling gale and blizzard, the camel bells are clearly audible, and the team of beasts acquit themselves well. The moment is sensitively captured in this incredible image. Windy and snowy foreworld is like a microcosm. Spectators can't help being drawn to the spot on Qinghai Tibet Highway on that spectacular day nearly seven decades ago. The unruly snow is falling thick and fast, but the camels nevertheless forge ahead in the northwestern landscape. The young painter Huang Zhou chanced upon this breathtaking view, destined to redefine the fine art history of the People's Republic of China. With a blend of realism and impressionism, the image presents the sounds, the visuals, as well as the elemental vehemence. The firmness of the camel steps, the billowing overcoats of the drovers, the melody sounded on the two-string dombra, and the ageless ballads—all these came together in this chronicle of human defiance and courage. And Huang Zhou's ingenious combination of sketching with traditional techniques. Has greatly enriched the vocabulary of Chinese fine art. This kind of sculpture to capture the fine art technique, I think, later became a feature of Huang Zhou. That is to say, he captured the essence of the fine art technique. What kind of experience and training has inspired Huang Zhou to embrace such a bold and unprecedented endeavor? To answer this question. We have to cast our mind back to the youngsters in an outdoor market eight decades ago. In 1943, Huang Zhou set up his kit in the market and tried to capture these vivid scenes unfolding before his eyes. From the haggling stallholders to the whispering farm women and the leisurely old man. This disadvantaged kid, without a single day of professional training, thus embarked on a path of fine art by observing human life as it was. 学院教育呢，画模特，就你坐着，坐着慢慢画。而速写呢，是在动态的过程中，有人画跳舞，跳舞呢，这动作一闪就过去了。这个呢，就呃非常难。Sketching has its origins in Western fine art, and usually employs the medium of carbon. But Huang Zhou's numerous sketches were mostly rendered in traditional Chinese brush. This offered a wider range of expressive potential in portraying motion. In the sketch depicting a Uyghur dancer. The young girl's flying dress is represented through an array of lines of varying values. 
The differing thickness and texture serve to accentuate the most explosive moment of the dance. In his lifetime, Huang Zhou produced some 40,000 sketches, which captured the most essential quality of their subjects. They are jubilant dancers, donkey riders, farmers gathering in the harvest. All these ordinary people are exulting with vigor and energy on paper. In the 1950s, the building of the People's Republic of China presented an inspiring panorama of hundreds of millions of people engaged in the great endeavor. Huang Zhou was so excited and eager to take the opportunity to portray and record such enthusiasm. Huang Zhou in the 20th century, his power, influence and meaning is related to his people. His people have a spirit of the Republic of China. In 1954, construction was drawing to a close for the Qinghai-Tibet Highway, the world's longest road at the highest altitude. Huang Zhou showed up at the construction site in Gomed in southern Thailand. Huang Zhou was born to go to the Qingzhang Railway Station. He was a reporter for Qingzhang. In the freezing temperature 40 degrees below zero, Huang Zhou trudged around the snowfield for half a month. The awe-inspiring desolation and cold weather made him realize the immensity of the project and drove him to create his most memorable work. At that time, it was raining for a long time. There was no one in the air. It was the place called the Death of Death. It was the death of death. They suddenly heard the sound of the tree. They heard the sound of the tree. They heard the sound of the tree. They heard the sound of the tree. The sound of camel bells piercing through the winds immediately dissolved the desolation. Shortly, they saw that it was a camel team driven by a group of geologists. Then they heard the melody played by the high-spirited scientists. These dauntless figures defying the almost primeval wilderness fired Huang Zhou's imagination. With brush in hand, he sketched the tableau. Unfortunately, however, all the sketches made during the encounter was later lost to an unexpected storm. After returning to Beijing, Huang Zhou could still see the unforgettable scene in his mind's eye. He was determined to portray the heroic act with his brush. Unfolding a stretch of xuan paper, Huang Zhou applied varying shades of ink to render his impressions of the snowy scene. A lowered point of view gave the camels a monumental heft. The figures and landscape soon materialized with remarkable spiritual essence. At that moment, the brush was like a warrior's saber. Huang Zhou was brimming with pride in immortalizing the dauntless builders of socialism braving the snows and winds. This image was his tribute to the people and the era. The painter felt the warrior's sense of purpose.
Nearly seven decades have elapsed, but on the wall of the gallery, the camel bell seems to be resonating still. The figures in the image would invite you to join them in the unexpected encounter for a spiritual reunion with the artist.